if you're weak, if you're weak, which some people would like you to be, if you're really, really pathetically weak, the country's going to be overrun with millions of people. And if you're strong, then you don't have any heart. That's a tough dilemma. Perhaps I'd rather be strong. The Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy for illegal immigration is shining a spotlight on U.S. detention camps. Handout footage from the U.S. government show children lying on the ground with mylar blankets and kennel-like wire cages at the country's largest immigration processing center. But the McAllen, Texas facility isn't the only immigration detention center in the U.S. As of June 2018, U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement, or ICE, runs 113 of its own facilities across the country, and it works with state and local jails along with private prisons to operate hundreds more. Here's how much it costs to detain someone in an immigration facility. According to DHS, on average, it costs $133.99 a day to maintain one adult detention bed. But other immigration groups have pegged the number closer to $200 a day. The cost to maintain a family bed, which keeps mothers and children together in a family residential center, costs around $319 a day, according to DHS. But as of April 2018, children have been separated from their parents with much higher frequency, which has led to the creation of tent cities to hold thousands of separated children. Those beds cost $775 a night. Since Trump's zero-tolerance policy was instated, at least 2,000 children and counting have been separated from their parents. As of June 2018, HHS says it was holding nearly 12,000 immigrant children, most of which arrived unaccompanied. There are a lot of different immigration facilities managed between ICE, CBP, HHS, and private contractors, and their estimates aren't always accurate. There's actually been so much discrepancy with ISIS figures that the U.S. government's accountability office looked into its budget request. It found that its methodology was inaccurate and recommended a change in the way it comes up with its cost estimates. And then there's the question of how long immigrants are detained for. ICE estimates an average stay of 44 days. And HHS says children typically stay in their facilities for an average of 57 days before being placed into foster care or sent to a relative. But thousands of immigrants have been held for months, even years, which makes them more likely to just leave America on their own through something called voluntary departure. The DHS projects there will be an average of 51,379 people held in detention centers each day in the fiscal year 2018. That's a pretty big jump from the last few years. And that's in big part thanks to President Trump. On January 25, 2018, Trump signed an executive order called Enhancing Public Safety in the Interior of the United States. It broadened the scope of who's at risk for deportation, called for thousands of new ICE agents, and directed DHS to use state and local police more to help enforce immigration law. A number of ICE's official reports reference Trump's executive order as a reason for ramping up its operations. And that means that more taxpayer money will be funneled toward beefing up ICE staffing. But that doesn't mean people aren't profiting. In fact, private prison companies are making a lot of money off detaining immigrants. Private prisons get stipends from the government to take over a lot of the responsibilities of running a prison. To get that stipend, their costs must be lower than that of a public prison. But the more beds a private prison can fill, the more funding they'll get from the government. And just like any business, the more costs they can cut, the bigger that profit margin will be. But many times, that results in poor quality of care for the prisoners themselves. Just look at Geo Group, one of the country's largest private prison corporations. It donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to a Trump super PAC, hosted its annual leadership conference at one of the Trump golf resorts, and just after Trump's election, its stock soared. In ICE's 2018 budget, it says a longer average length of stay will also drive the need for additional detention beds. Now, Geo Group officials say they're expecting earnings to rise with increased immigration detention time. Some prison reform advocates are pushing for something called alternatives to detention, which include things like location tracking, in-person check-ins, and ankle monitors to make sure people show up for court appointments. Compare the cost of something like that with a traditional detention center. While the lack of transparency and reliable information are kept pretty tightly under wraps, the flow of money going into immigration detention is on the rise. ICE budget requests have skyrocketed, and Trump's rhetoric doesn't show any signs of slowing down. 
Build that wall. 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 Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.